I was in the Camogie final yesterday, Galway 3-14, Kilkenny 17 points, so Galway uh, back up on top. Eighth final defeat in nine for Kilkenny, going back to the 90s. Rough enough for them, and Anne Downey has stepped down. Yeah, it's tough to take, particularly like three final losses in a row. Mm. And before this year, it had been two one-point losses to Cork. And I'd say what probably would have spurred her resignation was is a six-point loss to a team, not a team, a team that they would, you know, expect them to be beaten maybe 60% of the time, you know, and they're mm. after getting better in a third final. It's just hard to take. She came out with a great quote, actually, after the match. <laughs> she? she said about... Um, Basically, I, was there anything you'd like to do different or whatever? She just said you can't unscramble eggs. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it was the goals that were a killer. They were actually, even after Irish already got the first goal, Kilkenny were still relatively on top and were actually leading by a couple of points, but they got two goals in before half time. It was just an absolute killer. Mm. Like They actually said that. I think it's refreshing how honest they are, actually. Some of what, some, some of what the girls say. Irish already said after that we basically all the talk in the build up was how good Kilkenny's forwards are. And we basically wanted to show that our forwards are good, if not better. And she basically said that, that they went after the spine of the Kilkenny defence and they, like, they, they rained ball down the centre, particularly puckles and stuff like that. It's actually refreshing to hear yeah. someone say, yeah, we actually had a motivation for this game and we had tactics and we're willing to say somewhat to you what they are. They were, in general, looking for the extra pass to try and get the goal yeah. and I think they ended up with three, could have been five or six. Um, I think it was what Katrina Cormican did, uh, shutting down and Dalton. Yeah, that big, was big, yeah. But like Neve Kilkenny, Ridiculous yeah, performance. Yeah, class, like, yeah. She's just energizer like, ball. And she was just running away from everyone. Like, mm. She's kind of one of these that if you don't stop her getting the ball, once she gets the ball and there's any open space, she'll just go through it. Like One of her points in the second half, she just like totally went away mm. from two or three players, like, in fairness. But they were they had big performances all over. I know they were saying that Sarah Durvin, it was a bit dodge whether she should have got a second yellow in the second Possibly, half. Yeah, uh, very much so. I don't know. It was kind of a tangle of feet, to be fair, but... She's fair, she's fair tough of various. Yeah. They were never really going to get in around there. And it was actually kind of reminiscent of the league final. They were just real, the real kind of dogged defenders, yeah. real tough defenders. And we thought it was the best attack, we said, going up against the best defence. But <laughs> Galway ended up with the best, better mm. attack and probably the better defence as well. One thing that, um, that I didn't enjoy from the game was how many of the puck outs from both sides were just straight down the centre. It was kind of a bit agricultural. And at times it was like, I, d I just felt that more emphasis could have been put on how can we work the ball out because they're all well out to hurl but it just seemed to be just drive the ball straight down the centre and it's scramble after scramble. Yeah, as Irish O'Reilly said, that was part of their tactics. Yeah, like maybe, they, maybe they normally would be hitting balls to mm -hmm. the wing or hitting balls to midfielders. They kind of went after that. And I suppose with the pace that they had, they were putting ball down there and they had loads of people coming in around the breaks and they thought they might be able mm -hmm. to get through, which they did in fairness. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like The best display of goalkeeping I've ever seen was, uh, it was Mags Darcy in a semi-final against Cork one year down in Turris. And like the array of puckouts was just a joke. Like she was mm. putting it into your mouth from hundred yards wherever there was a free player. Like so, but yeah, no teams. I have seen in general watching Camogie games. There is more. There's more of that now. I suppose it minimises mistakes as well. Mm. It's a kind of like Wexford in the Leinster final. If you put yeah, like I, no, I know, I know. It's just at times it's like ah, it could be a bit more ambition to knock it out. Yeah, like, so well. like even like if you look at the pace of some of the players, and we mentioned Neve Kilkenny and Aoife Donahue also just yeah, yeah. buzzing around the place Class, yeah. there was a fair bit of criticism when I when I tweeted out basically the context of Kilkenny losing so many finals 8 and 9 and and Downey won in 2016 yeah manager. but a lot of people criticised her for that defeat and said it's like the same thing over and over and they suggested that there's a lack of tactical awareness on her behalf I don't know if she could be accused of that this year because they played a sweeper the last two years mm. and they were trying to keep things tight at the back they went for it an awful lot more this year and well, as a putting, result they conceded three goals yeah by putting Alan Dalton up in the forwards and not really getting the ball to her enough or her not playing quite well yeah. enough or whatever the reason for her not having the same impact you kind of robbed Peter and didn't pay Paul small bit yeah, yeah. like if she's up there it's like anything. If you're putting a couple of your best players up there, you have to give mm. them the ball. She has to be. She had to be the outlet every time they got a ball. But as you said, in fairness to Katrina Cormican, who actually pulled away from the ladies' football panel this year mm. to play Camogie, I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, it's too soon. If there was a couple of weeks between the finals, that she could be called. Yeah, in against the Dubs. If there was a replay, you never know. Uh, Westmead beat Galway in the intermediate final, and Kerry beaten. Uh, um, Limerick. The Westmead game was a remarkable game. Mm. Like Galway were totally on top. Totally on top. And then didn't score until the fourth minute of injury time in the second half. And that was a free, which they were going for a goal from. And fairness to um, Pamela Greville, 
and uh, I'd say she was fairly embarrassed when uh, her brother Johnny was doing the post-match interview after <laughs> he gave that great quote about the, the we know Jim Gavin here and just went on a kind of a, a, ra- a great like 90 second rant where he just like was totally enthused or whatever but Pamela Gravel hit 9 points I think she's 36 I think she was she was part of the Premier Junior winning team as well so they brought them the whole way through to senior uh, funny thing about Camogie and it happened with Offaly as well a lot of the time the team that does win the Premier Junior and you've seen them at Waterford in recent years there's not that big of a gap between mm. Premier Junior and Intermediate and a lot of the time they can win the two of them pretty closely together but it's a fair rise it's a fair rise for West Mead mm. in fairness and just to talk about Camogie issues uh, Sarah Friday she put out a tweet and basically she was looking at uh, the promotion of the game, players being released to their clubs, and basically the club schedule being over so quickly. So she's a club player in tip, and she, uh, one of her, it was like an eight part tweet, but um, one little segment of it is We, like many other clubs in tip, had our first championship match 16 days ago. We played three games since, and now roughly two weeks later, Club Camogie is over. Uh, Nina Aero uh, Camogie Championship was over in 10 days after just two games. That's just brutal, like yeah. In fairness, I've seen, I've seen the same at Offaly. Like they're they're given a time or a schedule when they're supposed to be playing, and like oh, on a whim it can be changed mm. on a whim, and like it's just you don't know. Like how do you? Keep, how does the game develop? Uh, it, how do it players stay really, interested? Like, how do you play? How are you out of the championship in three weeks? Like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, at least give them something earlier on in the year and give them something in the middle of the year and give them something then. Do you know, I don't know, how do you keep the thing going? How does mm. the manager keep it going? Not I even remember well. Park Duffy a couple of years ago talking about you know, trying to help the club um, fixture by saying we want them to have at least, and this is in the men's game, have at least two championship games per year. And he was saying it as if that's a great thing. I yeah. think two, the idea that two club championship games would would satisfy the amount of effort that goes into it is insane to me. I think at the minimum you should be playing six or seven club championship games, whether that's like whatever way it works out, two groups of six, seven, eight, whatever you have yeah. in your club championship. And I don't know like, if ideas. Tipperary, Camogie or a lot of other counties have a meaningful league competition as well. Because mm. if they don't, like what are you doing? You're playing challenge games, you're struggling to get 10 or 12 down training because yeah. you know yourself, it's like it's like you have an exam in six weeks, you know you have to study for that exam. If you don't know, if you don't know the date of the exam, like are you going to study? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. So, yeah. And just on the junior, the junior final as well, massive win, massive win for Kerry who were beaten last year. Only one senior club, I think 14 of the team are from the mm. same club um, it, was a, it was actually it was, a, it was a decent game to watch as well yeah, it's, um, I think it's been worked on underage with other clubs so the, the future might be bright for yeah hopefully so yeah um, right so that's the end of the Camogie don't forget to, to click uh, subscribe if you haven't already and click on the bell if you want to be notified when further videos go live